Hey everyone, I'm Russell Mullen with Mother Earth News. I'm Jessica Kellner, Editor-in-Chief of Mother Earth Living. And today we're going to put a new twist on a Valentine tradition. And that is we're going to be making rose water instead of just giving your loved ones some roses. Yeah, this is a really cool project. It's a great way to make something useful out of the flowers that you give or receive for Valentine's Day. Um, one tip, you definitely want to use organic flowers if you're going to be making rose water because you're going to be putting this on your body and potentially ingesting it. So just make sure when you go to your local florist that you inquire about organic roses. All right, so um, again, we got this uh, particular methodology from this book right here, Wild Drinks and Cocktails by Emily Hahn. Emily Hahn, and uh, this is a great resource. It has all kinds of other things that you can look at in here as well, and there should be a link in the comments if you're interested in actually checking this book out. All right, so uh, how about we get right to it? We have our lovely roses here, and I'll Thank hand you. those to you. And we have our pot, and this is going to be a really simple, basically we're making a, a simplified distiller that you can make at home in your own kitchen. You can use any stainless steel or enamelware pot with a lid. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to start off by, let me reach across here. You want to come in here actually and kind of see what we're doing here. The first thing you want to do is you're going to take a heat safe bowl or cup. You can put it down here. A ceramic bowl that you use for cereals should be just fine as long as it's uh, safe for the um, dishwasher. And you're going to set it right there in the center. And this is going to act as a base. And then you're going to place your cup and this is going to catch the hydrosol. And you'll see exactly how that process works in here in just a second. And so you're going to add your rose petals. You want to add about six cups of rose petals, and for us that should be about three or four large roses. And you just pull the rose petals right off. Oops. All right, and we can actually one let's more. let's save this one. All right. Yeah, we have to save we have to save one rose. Okay, so Russell Tiana Campanis says I love rose water, and she makes it all the time, and she gave us three rose emojis. Oh, awesome! awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and if you guys have any other comments. Uh, questions, anything, go ahead, put that in the comment section, and we'll try and answer them as best we can. And if we can't answer them or we don't get to them during the live feed, still feel free to put your comments in there, and then we'll have someone monitoring the feed afterwards, and we'll try and get your answers question, your questions answered mm -hmm. as best as we can. This is a really great thing to make, especially because rose water that you buy that's high quality is very expensive. Yes. If you've already spent the money on the organic flowers, then making it into rose water is virtually free, mm -hmm. and it's a really awesome product. We'll talk a little bit as we're making it of all the kinds of ways you can use it around the house. Yeah, this is a, a gift basically that you can give twice. So instead of just getting a bouquet of roses that you see, you put on the table, they start wilting, uh, they dry out, this is a way that you can actually preserve that memory and give the roses another life, so to speak. And, and even if they're dried out, uh, kind of like this rose here, you can still utilize these petals uh, yeah. just as well. And we should mention, if you don't have fresh roses or if you are unable to find organic fresh roses, mm -hmm. you can also do this with dried roses. Um, those are available in lots of health food stores. You want to get organic dried rose buds. Um, you can also get them online from Mountain Rose Herbs or other health food distributors online. Absolutely. So Pamela Pagan wants to know, what is rose water particularly made for and are there multiple uses? Yeah. Okay, ahead, yeah, there are tons of uses. This stuff is really amazing. Rose water, one of the number one things that roses are good for is um, lowering anxiety and elevating mood. So aromatherapy uses it a lot for those things. So when you make the rose water, if you want to use it in that regard, you can put it into your bath and it'll make a really nice, relaxing, anxiety-soothing bath. Or you can use it as a spritzer on your face every morning. It's also anti-inflammatory and antiviral. And so it's really good if you feel that you you have an illness coming on. Um, you can drink rose water. You can combine it with chamomile tea at night, and that makes a really nice anxiety soothing and immune boosting drink. You can also make cocktails with it. I've read really good recipes of rose water, gin, and Saint Germain liqueur. Um, that's a delicious drink. Um, you can use it on your hair as a hair rinse. You can use it as a spray for furnishings and uh, bedding. So really, tons yeah. of stuff. It's, it's really amazing. The real question here should be, what can't you use it for? <laughs> there are yeah. so many uses. I know one of my favorites is rose water lemonade. I, oh, especially when yeah. it starts getting warmer out. So. Yeah. 
So uh, Jen Corleone uh, says that she keeps it in a spray bottle in the fridge and uses it as a refreshing spritzer in the summer when she needs a cool blast in the face. A <laughs> winky face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, people talk about starting their day with it also because of those mood elevating um, aspects. And so if you want to use it as a morning face scrub or in the shower as adherence, it's a really nice way to sort of get your day going. Yep. Yeah, and you can put it in a simple spray bottle just like this if you want to have some around just to spritz on fabric or as a face toner. Uh, just be sure to label it. That's something that's really important so you know what when you made it, uh, what you made it from, and you can keep track of all these things. You don't end up with a ton of just random bottles around. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and Malcolm Tor Torumi wants to know, aren't the flowers poisonous? No. No, okay. <laughs> no now, they're not. The only, the only way that they could be is if you're getting uh, roses that aren't organic because they will most likely have pesticides and herbicides on them. Uh, so you want to stay away from that. Get organic roses um, if you're going to use that or use them for this sort of thing because you're going to be ingesting it, you're going to be spraying it on your skin. So it's really important. Absolutely. And, and Malcolm, Malcolm wants to know uh, if men can use this as well. Absolutely. Russell, you, do, is that how you got your healthy compulsion? <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the ways, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and Diane said there's so many, many edible flowers. Yeah. That's true. I read that um, Cleopatra was said to scent her ship's sails with rose water, and Shakespeare wrote so that the winds themselves were lovesick. Oh, wow. It's kind of romantic. <laughs> That's very Just romantic. telling you I read that. <laughs> <laughs> That's very romantic. I love that. All right, so again, if you want to come in here, for those of you just tuning in, we've added the rose petals into this pan. We have a base down here. It's just any heat-safe um, bowl or cup. And then we're going to put a, a jar on top, and that's what's actually going to capture the hydrosol. So this is about six cups of fresh rose petals. You can also use dried rose petals. Um, if you use dried rose petals, you won't need quite six cups of them, and you might want to add a little bit more water because uh, they're going to soak that up. And the next thing that we're going to do is add six cups of distilled water. So why are we using distilled water? Uh, we're using distilled water because uh, regularly tap water has a lot of chemicals in it, has minerals in it. This will create a cleaner product, something that when you're putting it on your face won't leave residues and things like that. So and we're adding just enough water to cover the rose petals and kind of come up to the bottom of, or the top of that bowl. And when you start this, you're not going to want to bring it to a rolling boil the entire time. You want it to be a nice simmer. It doesn't need to be boiling. And you're going to do that for about one and a half hours. And you want to get about a cup. And this is just about a cup. So I love these little mason jars. They're perfect for it. They're heat safe. Um, and whenever it gets close to full, that's when I'll pull it out. And I can put the, the jar lid right on top. And it's ready to go. And the next part of this is the lid, and this is really important. Most of the times when you're doing something in a stock pot like this, you're going to put the lid on right side up. In this case, we're actually going to flip it over and put it in there upside down. And this is simple. Since this is uh, distillation, what's going to happen is the condensation is going to collect on this lid, and it's going to um, basically start dripping down from this center point, which is the handle. And that's going to be lined up right with this handy cup here, and it will fill it up. Now that we have the lid on there, the we do. Aha. So after you put your lid on there, this is really important. You're going to get a baggie and fill it with ice. So uh, Pancelli Walford wants to know, can you use this same process for other flowers, for making hydrosol for other flowers? Absolutely, yes. You can use the same method for flowers like lavender or even herbs as well. So this is a very versatile method, not just for roses. And, and how much ice are we using? I'm just filling up a quart bag. Now, you're probably going to have to refill this bag at least a few times throughout the process because it will melt from the heat of the steam hitting the lid. And so you'll want to be sure to have enough ice on hand in order to do that. And basically what this is doing is just like an ice cold drink on a hot summer day, this cold ice is going to help the process of the condensation collecting on the bottom of the lid. And that's really what we're looking for. We want those vapors to condensate and then to drip down into our collection bottle. Uh, and that's what's going to be our hydrosol. And you're going to have this simmering for about an hour and a half. And then after, you want to look in there every once in a while. You can peek in there. 
see how much liquid is collected in your jar, and then after it is filled up, you're going to pull out something that looks very similar to this. So this is some hydrosol from Rose's Day, actually, and it's very fragrant. It smells great. This is a wonderful gift, too. If you make this or make a couple of bags, you can put it in a pretty bottle and mm -hmm. a nice label. Give it as a gift to give someone. The thing that I love about this method is so easy, mm -hmm. and you don't have to strain anything. So you get a, an end product that's very pure and has a lot of the aroma and properties of the rose petals themselves. Yeah. And again, once you flowers, it's free. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, something else to plug in that our magazine. have an article in it in this upcoming issue about making rose water and honeysuckle syrup. So definitely give that a check out. If you haven't checked out Heirloom Gardener before, it's a great resource for learning how to grow heirloom cultivars at home and uses for those. Yep, that'll be the spring 2017 issue, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we got this particular method from Wild Drinks and Cocktails by Emily Hahn, a great resource. And we also have the excerpt on how to make rose water on the Mother Earth News website. There should be a link for that in the comment section, so check that out. It'll tell you exactly how to do this step by step in case you missed it. And, and uh, yeah, I wish you luck on that. And um, Any other questions? Yeah, love to answer some more questions. Uh, does it need to be refrigerated afterwards? You can refrigerate it afterwards in that lifespan of it. Now, with this particular method, it should keep for about six months. So I would recommend refrigerating it. Cool. Yeah, and again, always make sure to label it once you've finished it, just so that you don't ever get confused of what you're using or forget that you have it or whatever. Label it with the date and what you made. Absolutely. And uh, with that, I guess that we're going to sign off. Thank you, know, thank you guys for you know, great having you here. And we hope to see you next time. We generally have these days at noon.